The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. As he looks into the face of death, at the hands of his enemies, Shakespeare's young King Richard II says, The love of wicked men converts to fear, that fear to hate, and hate turns one or both to worthy danger and deserved death. We're about to see how a kind of love became so poisoned with fear and evil that it became transformed into brutality and hatred. And finally, a kind of death. Our mystery drama, The Corpse That Would Not Die, was adapted from the Emile Zola classic Therese Raquin, especially for the Mystery Theater by Arnold Moss, and stars Patricia Elliott. The scene, the left bank of Paris during the last few years of the reign of Napoleon III. The Passage du Pont Neuf is a dark and gloomy corridor, no more than 30 yards long, a block away from the River Seine. The air is the wet, chilling air of a vault, for the sun never touches the Passage du Pont Neuf. A row of run-down, dismal shops fronts on either side of the narrow street. One bears the sign, Raquin, Dry Goods. It is evening. Inside, by the gloomy light of a flickering oil lamp, the proprietress of the musty little shop, Madame Raquin, a plump old lady in her late sixties, is seated in a wheelchair. A huge red cat snuggles on her lap. Camille, my dear? Yes, Mother. You've locked the iron shutters over the shop window? Yes, I have, Mother. Therese, you've put away the needles and thread Madame Grivet did not purchase? I have, Madame Raquin. Ah, is my cup of chamomile tea ready, Therese? Uh, here it is, Madame. Ah, what a wonderful fragrance chamomile has. I think I would never have a night of peaceful sleep without my cup. Oh, uh, will you join me, Camille? Each night you ask, each night I answer. No, thank you, Mother. Now, I think only of your good, my precious boy. You are not the strongest man in the world. Tell me again, Mother, for the ten thousandth time. I know, I now, know. You must not mock your mother. Your mother loves you. If I didn't see that things were done for you, who would? Do you forget? I now have a wife, have I not, Therese? Yes, Camille, you certainly have a wife. And you're as strong as I am weak. And beautiful, what's more? What else could a man ask for? What I do, Camille, I do. For my own good, I know. Oh, Frost, while you're getting heavier every day, oh, you've grown to be the biggest cat in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm the handsomest. Well, thank goodness, tomorrow is Thursday. I'll have to put more oil in the table lamp. Oh, and have you seen that there's enough firewood for a really good fire? Inspector Michaud likes a warm fire. Yes, there's plenty of wood. We mustn't let Police Inspector Michaud think we're pinching pennies. <laughs> Not with your 40,000 francs in the bank, we mustn't. I'll take your cup, madame, if you're finished. Uh, by the way, I've asked a friend of mine to join us at Domino's tomorrow night. Fellow employee at the office. Oh, who is he? What's he like? Mm, tall, handsome. Name's Laurent. Laurent Duchesne. The women can't keep their eyes off him. Or their hands. Fancies himself a portrait painter. You'll like him, Mother. So would you, Therese. I look forward to meeting him. Oh, ten o'clock, bedtime. Therese, whenever you are ready to lift this poor cripple out of her wheelchair and up into her bed. I am ready. Uh, thank you, my dear. Up, up, Rosa. Up, my lap. Dreadful animal. You said something. 
Uh, uh, no, nothing. Uh, is there anything I can do to help? As always, just stay out of the way. Now, here we go. Madame, uh, your right arm round my neck. I'll, uh, I'll go up ahead. I think the door to Mother's uh, room is closed. If only Camille were well and strong, he would carry me to my bed. We both know that, Madame. As his wife... I have learned to live with it. Oh, the door was open all the time. There you are, madame. Oh. I'll be back to undress you in a moment. May the time come when I shall carry you to your bedroom for the last time. What was that, Therese? Uh, only that... Only that someday soon may the... Good Lord, see fit to put life back into your limbs. Is there anything else, madame? No, thank you. I'm quite sleepy. Good night to you both. Uh, sleep well, mother. Good night, madame. I heard what you said to my mother. Why do you hate her so? No more than I despise you. I made my bed without realizing what I was getting into. Now I have no choice but to lie in it. I am your husband. This is your home. So you keep telling me. But for me, this is no home. It's more like a chilling, newly dug grave. Therese. Don't touch me. The touch of your hand turns my stomach. Oh. Yes, by all means, bring your friend tomorrow night. It will be refreshing to have a man in the house. Shut your ugly mouth. <gasps> You slapped me. You dared, you little, little weakling dared. No, no, stop it, Therese. Now put down that poker. You'll kill me. I did. It might be the best thing that could happen to both of us. You're sure you won't join us at Domino's, Monsieur Laurent? Not uh, till I finish Camille's portrait. As you please. I have a three blank which I place here. What do you say to that, Camille? Blank four here, Inspector Michaud. Uh, four six here. And double six here. My game again. <laughs> this has been my night for dominoes. The tea, madame, if you are ready. Oh, uh, Monsieur Duchesne, time for a cup of tea and a biscuit. Oh, thank you, madame. In a moment. A few more strokes around Camille's eyes and... His portrait will be finished. And, and, and do call me Laurent, won't you? Oh, if it pleases you. Inspector Michaud, your tea. And do finish your story about this um, Bernard. Thank you. As I was saying before, this chap Bernard got away with murdering two of his wealthy wives. In both instances, he came up behind them while they were taking a bath in their big tin tubs, held their heads underwater until they were quite dead. It wasn't until he killed the third that we caught up with him. That was his big mistake. Are you saying, Inspector, that he should have done away with each of them by uh, varying the pattern of his murders? <laughs> if he had, it might have taken us a bit longer to find him. You brew a tasty cup of tea, Therese? Thank you, Inspector. Uh, Laurent, when may we look at my portrait? After we've had our tea, dear friend, I... I think you'll be pleased. You, uh, you paint from models, of course. Oh, of course. Women models? Well, certainly. Mostly what I suppose you might call, uh, friends of mine. You, you mean women come to your studio and pose for you in the, uh, <laughs> without clothes? Well, of course. Why not? Well, that must make you feel ever so funny. I know it would make me feel strange. I, I wouldn't know where to turn my eyes. Really, Camille? Your tea, Monsieur Laurent. Oh, thank you. You know, I, I, I once had this lovely redhead as a model. Beautiful features, firm white flesh, gorgeous body. And I was right in the middle of... Oh, 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 oh dear. What, what have I done? Oh, oh, I am so terribly sorry. Oh, you I... spilled the whole cup of tea all over Laurent's trousers. Oh, Therese, how could you be so awkward? Oh, here, here. Let, let me wipe your trousers with this cloth. No, no, it's really all right. Oh. My hand is still shaking. Oh, please do forgive me. As though it had never happened, my dear Therese. Francoise, the cat, happened to brush by me as I was handing you the cup. No, 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 no. Not another word. 
You know, when you look at me with those big, sad, beautiful eyes, I feel that, that I am the one to blame. You're very kind. Oh, Therese, would you get a couple of more logs from outside? The fire's getting a bit low. Yes, madame. Yes, madame. Don't, don't, don't you call her mother? I do not. Uh, excuse me. Let me help you with the logs, Therese. Oh, there's no need, Laurent. She is strong. I can carry them all alone, but if you wish... I insist. Now, let me go with you, please. The domino pieces are set up for another game. May I help myself to another biscuit? Oh, please do, Inspector. Oh, what a charming man, your painter, Camille. Yes, I'm very fond of him. He makes Therese a little nervous. Is that why she spilled the tea over him? Of course. Didn't you see that? Her hands are as steady as a rock. Not a nerve in her whole beautiful body. Inspector Michaud, you see everything. <laughs> Even sometimes when there's nothing there. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, you see... You were wrong, Inspector. <laughs> they seem to be getting along quite well. She's not a bit nervous. <laughs> and here, madame, are your logs. Uh, thank you. Uh, will you permit me to place one or two on the fire? Oh, thank you, Laurent. But isn't it time we saw the portrait you've been painting of Camille? Why not? Turn up the lamp, Therese. I, uh, turn the easel so. And there it is. <gasps> Oh, no. I, I can't believe it. I, I I really don't believe it. Is that how I look to you, Laurent? But that's not you he's painted, Camille. Why, the features are twisted and, and distorted. The hair soaking with water. And the color, the, the greenish, the look of a man who's been drowned. Laurent, what have you done? Well, an artist only paints what he sees. But that is not a portrait of my son. What you have painted is the face of death. Lorraine, my darling. Oh, how wonderful it is to be here in your little studio. How happy I am that you're here. Oh, if you could only know what I've been through these past few months. Oh, buried alive in that horrible shop. And when he puts his cold, clammy hands on me, my blood freezes. But we're changing all that, aren't we? You and I. Oh, yes. Yes, we are, my darling. Oh, Laurent, I love you so. And I love you. There's a cloud of fire that surrounds you. It it burns into my body. I, I, I could never... What's wrong? These stolen moments are, are too few, Therese. They're not enough for me. Nor for me. I want to sleep the whole night beside you and be awakened in the morning by your warm kisses. Oh, I want that too, my love. But how can we? Accidents happen every day. Do they not? Laurent. A foot may slip. A tile could fall and the only guilty party would be the wind. But how, Laurent? How? Trust me, my angel. I shall find a way. Uh, did you hear anything? Outside the door. It sounded like Madame's cat, Francois. How could that be? He may have followed me here. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet, quiet. Nobody. It's not a thing. It was only in our imagination. But why should we have both imagined the voice of Francois at the very same moment? Oh, hold me close, Laurent. I'm very afraid. Ralph Waldo Emerson... A wise man that he was observed that whenever a man commits a crime, God finds a witness. That every secret crime has its reporter. Laurent and Therese Requin have already committed one crime, adultery. They are contemplating still another. Was there a reporter to their first act? Where will their dark plans lead them? To act two, of course. I shall return shortly. It's 
a Sunday afternoon toward the end of September at saint ouen a beautiful wooded section on the outskirts of Paris, along the River Seine, where the less fashionable Parisians of a hundred years ago gather for their picnics. On this particular morning, Therese Raquin, her husband Camille, and her newly acquired lover, Laurent, are in a narrow little rowboat they have hired. They've spotted a tiny island in the river away from the Sunday crowds where they can set up their picnic lunch in a clearing among the trees. Here, we shouldn't have too much farther to go. A few minutes, no no more, and we we should be there, Laurent. Well, take your time. We're not in all that much of a hurry. Oh, (laughs) sorry. Keep the boat steady, please. I I will, I will, of course. Now, remember, I can't swim, not a stroke. When I was a child, Mother never allowed me to swim. Of course... You, on the other hand... Like a fish, Camille, like a fish. We're going to have the island all to ourselves. Oh, the water looks so cold and forbidding. This must be the deepest part of the river. Uh, Since we're in no particular hurry, is it all right if we just drift for a while? Why not? Just don't move about, either of you, please. (sighs) Oh, everything is so beautiful. So quiet and... Peaceful. We can hardly see the people on the shore, and uh, nobody can see us. It's our own little world. Oh, floating here on the river with my wife and my best friend. Oh, I wish this moment would never have to come to an end. Yes, but like everything else, dear friends, it must. Oh, 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 it oh, it oh, has oh, 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 for oh, you, oh, Camille. Oh, oh, what? What are you doing, Laurent? You'll have to the boat. We'll, we'll all fall into the river. We'll drown. No, not all of us, Camille. Not all of us. Stop him. Stop him. Therese, stop him. Hold out of the oil. Therese, I've got him. He can't get away. He's holding onto the side of the boat. We'll take care of that. I put on his fingers. So. And now, over the side, my boy, into the... He's shut his teeth into the flesh of my neck. Let go, Camille, let go. Now, into the river, my friend. Start rowing, Therese, while I hold his head under the water. So, so. Are you all right, Therese? I don't know. I think so. Well, then, then don't waste a moment. Slide over the side of the boat into the water quickly. Right. From this side. Ah. And then I, I've capsized the boat and joined you. Ah. Help! 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 Somebody help! Help! We're drowning, all help. of us! Help! Help! And that... Inspector Michaud is exactly what happened. When the boat overturned, I reached first to save Therese, and by the time I'd rescued her, it was too late, alas, for poor Camille. He disappeared under the waters of the Seine. Dear me, dear me, how dreadful. Monsieur Laurent, how shall we break the news to his dear mother? That's exactly why I came to you, Inspector. You, as a former policeman, as well as one of Madame's oldest friends... You did well, Monsieur Laurent. Poor Therese, so young and a widow. What will become of her, I wonder? Who's to console her? It would be an honor and a privilege to do whatever I could for the widow of one of my dearest friends. So? I apologize to the memory of Camille for what I'm about to say at this sad moment. But if Therese would accept me, I should be very proud to be her husband. You're a fine fellow, Long. And most understanding. Tomorrow, the salvage men of the police will drag the river for the body. Drag? All of them, of course. There must be a proper certificate of death issued by the city coroner at the morgue. Because officially, legally... Where there's no body, there is, of course, no death. Good 
morning. Good morning, monsieur. You're bright and early, as usual. I must find the body of Camille Raka. <laughs> so you say each morning you come here to the morgue to visit my unfortunate guests. Oh. Ah, still not used to it after coming here every morning for, what is it, over a week? Well, it, it, it's the smell, the dampness of the walls, the rows of gray stone slabs. Mm, yes, takes getting used to. Uh, this way, please. Uh, here. Would this one be your friend? Well, it's a little hard to tell. The flesh is so decom... That's him. That's Camille. They found him at last. No, no, don't take it too hard, monsieur. We all have to go sometime, sooner or later. The eyes, the lids are wide open. The eyes are staring right at me. Easy, monsieur. You're sure he's the one? Oh, yes, yes, I am. But all you have to do now is to swear to the identity of the corpse and a legal certification of death will be issued to the police. Thank you, thank you, monsieur. And, uh... For your trouble? Oh, the gentleman is most generous. Thank you, monsieur. Not at all. That certificate of death may well be worth some 40,000 francs. Laurent? Laurent? Laurent, you all right? Wake up. Wake up, you're shivering. Oh, Therese, I... I managed to doze off for a moment. I... I had another horrible nightmare. So did I. T tell me, what was yours? It was... before we were married. It was a dark, starless night. I'd left my studio. I was running through the streets to you in your bedroom. I got to the passage, to the back door. I lit a match to light my way. It went out. I lit another... In the dim, bluish light, I heard weird voices. I, I thought I saw monstrous shapes against the walls. It was, it was hard to breathe. I climbed the steps. I opened the door, which you had left unlocked. I quickly undressed. I got into bed where you, all white, were waiting for me. I started to kiss you. Yes, yes. What, what then? It was not you. But Camille, as I had seen him in the morgue, green, disfigured, his hair plastered to his face by the waters of the river. Oh, how dreadful. The corpse held out its arms to me, cackling hideously, oh. poking out a stump of a black tongue from between its white teeth. Oh, and then, And then a moment later, I was standing in front of a cracked mirror looking at the red scar on my neck, the one Camille had ripped into my flesh with his teeth. And as I looked... With Camille's grinning face behind mine, the wound grew larger and larger, eating a black hole into my neck, my neck on fire. And always his, his twisted face behind me, mocking me with his dead yellow eyes. Oh, Laurent, go back to sleep, if you can. Tell me what you dreamed. Oh. It was much worse. Much more frightening. I, too, dreamed of a time before our marriage. What happened? Well, it was a time when I loved you and you loved me. A time when the touch of your lips on mine, your body against mine, was the only reason for my being alive my entire life. What happened in the dream, Therese? You embraced me. You kissed me. We became one. And then? Then I awoke, and I found myself biting into my pillow to stifle my sobs as I used to when Camille was still alive. Oh, how long has it been since you wanted to touch me, Laurel? How long has it been since I wanted to touch you? Why is it? Since the day we murdered Camille, we've never once desired each other. I don't want to talk about it. To me, that is the most horrifying thing that could have happened to both of us. Because now, Laurent, we are both murderers. With nothing to hold us together. <laughs> How long a 
have you been sitting there, staring into the flames? I couldn't sleep. I was cold. I got out of bed and lit a fire. We killed Camille. His corpse is always here between us. His dead body is turning our limbs to ice. Therese. Look. Where? What is it? There. In that shadowy corner over there. He's followed us here. It's Camille. <gasps> Where? No, don't, don't move, Therese. How green his face is and how thin. How yellow those staring eyes. He's come back from the grave. Quiet, Laurent. You'll wake Madame Raquin. What shall we do? You fool. Look closely. Have you forgotten? Where? It's only his portrait. The one you painted that Thursday night, the first time we met. Of course. His portrait. By the light of the fire, it looks so... Turn it to the wall, Therese. No. No, I can't. I, I can't go anywhere near it. Then I will. I'll do even better. What are you, what are you looking for? My large hunting knife. It's there, on, on top of the dresser. You remember how upset the old woman was when she looked at the portrait the first time? She said it was not Camille's face you had painted, but the face of death. Mm -hmm. How right she was. Now neither she, nor you, nor I will ever have to look at it again. Ever. Oh! Laurent, what are you doing? Never again. Never. 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 You, you've ripped the portrait to shreds. And with it, the last memory of Camille. For both of us, I hope. In the writings of an ancient Roman philosopher, we find these words. A man who has done another man an injustice can receive no greater punishment than to have done the injustice. And however harsh his punishment, no penalty can be more brutal than the whipping he takes from his own guilt. True. I shall return shortly with Act Three. tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. The guilt starts piling up and in the end destroys us. Therese and her husband Laurent have already wrecked what love there ever was between them by the murder of Camille. How much further will their guilt lead them? It's another Thursday evening in the dingy little room behind her tiny dry goods shop, Madame Raquin sits in her wheelchair, the cat Francois on her lap, playing dominoes with her old friend, Police Inspector Michaud. And I place my double blank here, Madame, next to your six blank. What do you say to that? I say, Inspector Michaud, that you remained a bachelor all your life because you couldn't be all that lucky, both at love and at dominoes. <laughs> Ten o'clock, madame. Uh, time for bed. Oh, already? Well, so it is, so it is. Would you like me to carry oh. you upstairs, mother? Oh, that's very kind of you, Laurent, my boy, but Therese is used to it by now. Uh, up we go. Uh -uh. Uh, so... Good night, Michaud. Uh, Perhaps I'll have better luck next Thursday. Good night, Laurent. Good night, Madame Raquin. Sleep well, Mother. The old girl is slowing down a bit, I fear. Yes, I'm afraid so. That uh, case you were telling us about before, I didn't quite follow you. The, the young woman who was drowned. Oh, that one. Not a trace of water in her lungs which led the authorities to believe she had died of natural causes. And, uh, what made them change their minds? A person can drown, or be drowned, if he's taken by surprise. Surprise suffocation, we call it. Not a drop of water in the lungs. It all happens Madame when... Madame Raquin gets heavier and heavier every time I carry her up and down those stairs. Oh, time for me to go. Must get my eight hours. Keeps me young and spry. I'll say good night to you two. Good night, Inspector. Until next Thursday. Until next Thursday. Until next Thursday. Beautiful night, isn't it? 
that stupid, boring old fool. Why can't we just pack up and leave? Start a new life somewhere. Anywhere. Well, what would we use for money? When that miserable old woman signs a paper handing over her 40,000 francs to us, we can think about going away. But not before. But even if we were to... Yes, Laurent? Even if we went to the ends of the earth, he would follow us. Camille. Who else? When we lie awake at night in our bed, you near one edge, I near the other, he, he lies there between us. Stop. Stop saying those things. No, I tell you, Therese, I can hear him breathing. I can feel his cold, wet body next to mine turning the sheets to ice. Therese, you're not really a widow. You never were. What are you saying? You're still married to the man we drowned. There's somebody at the front door. Do you hear it? Who could it be in the middle of the night? Don't move. I'll see. Oh, it's Francois. I didn't know he was still out. I thought we'd already let him in. That cursed cat. Go away. Away. Soaking wet, dripping with water. And it's a beautiful night out there. The sky is clear and filled with stars. Shh. Don't you jump onto that table. <gasps> Give me that iron poker, Therese. No. Get down off that table. Look out, Laura. He's getting ready to spring at you. I'm not afraid of him. He's going to spring for your neck. Watch out. Look at those unblinking yellow eyes, how they stare at me. And why does he drip with the smell of the river? Put down that poker, Laurel. Look out. He's going for your throat. Hey, yeah. I know who you are. Camille. I killed you once. Now stay dead, Camille. Die. Die. Let him be, Laurent. Your neck is bleeding where he bit you. Let it bleed. It's bled before. You know something, Therese. What? The day I first set eyes on you, I cursed that day. And so do I, Laurent. That was the blackest day of my life. <laughs> Laurent, why did you throw the painting to the floor and the easel? I'm disgusted with the whole thing. I do nothing but paint, 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 and look at them. Every one of them. They're not bad, Laurent. That's not the point. Look, here's Monsieur Tristan, the tobacconist, and here Madame Colomb, the greengrocer, and there the three children of the postman. Can't you see what's wrong? Are you blind? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Look at the eyes, the texture of the skin, the expression on the faces. They're all the same. Every face I paint has his expression. Some some feature of Camille's on every face, a look of agony and terror. I, I, I begin to see what you mean. In spite of everything I do, the mouth of each of them is, is distorted into an ugly grimace. The same look that was on Camille's face when we drowned him. When you drowned him. What? You picked him up. You stepped on his fingers when he clung to the side of the boat. You threw him into the river. You pushed his head into the water and kept it there as he choked out his dying breath. Therese, you're as guilty as I am of Camille's death. It's your word against mine. You liar! Uh, we planned uh, every step of it together. Uh, I throat. I can't breathe. I murdered Camille, and so did you. We did it together. Say so, Therese. Say so. All right. We did it together. You and I, we both murdered. Madame Raquel. What are you doing here? I heard every word you said. I was here in my wheelchair, in the doorway. Your backs were to me. You, you killed my son. My only son. You... What's wrong with her? 
body's gone rigid. Her hands and feet are stiff. She doesn't move. Only her eyes. We must call a doctor. She's had a stroke. Easy with her now, Law. Now hold the chair still while I put her into it. There, there. <laughs> oh, look at her eyes. You see us. Hear us, don't you? But you can't speak a word, can you, dear madame? Nor lift so much as a finger of your dying old body. She says everything with her eyes. <laughs> She accuses us with her eyes. Isn't it a pity, old lady? We murdered that miserable son of yours, Therese and I. We drowned him in the river. And nobody will ever know. Except the three of us. I curse you from the bottom of my soul for what you've done. Maybe it would be wiser if... If she didn't sit here tomorrow night when Inspector Michaud comes. What harm is there? He'd ask for her, surely... Besides, the doctors told us there's no hope for her. If she ever manages to speak again, it'll be the last breath she ever takes. Shall we wait for Therese? Uh, she'll be down in a moment. Let's set up the pieces for the game, shall we? And how is my old friend, Madame Racan? Ready to watch our dominoes game for the championship of the evening? <laughs> I can see the light of anticipation shining in your eyes. And how is the good Francois? Uh, unfortunately, Inspector, the poor creature is still limping from whatever he did to his leg. <laughs> he sits there like some red-haired monarch, silent on Madame's lap, glaring at you, Laurent. Sorry to delay the game, Inspector Michel. Ah, there you are, Therese. We're all set. I'll sit here. Between you and Madame. You begin, Laurent. All right, I begin with a 4-3 piece. Followed by my 3-5 piece here. Mm -hmm. And a double 4, so. Wait. Laurent, twice. Look. Oh, what is it? Madame Racan. Her right hand. It's moving. Ever so slowly. With the greatest effort. She's forcing it up the leg of the table. Oh, this is the first time she's moved since her stroke. Look at her eyes. She's m moving the tip of her index finger. Trying to get our attention. Yes, madame, what is it you want? What can we do for you? If my strength holds out, you'll know. Just watch my I'm trying to trace a letter on the oil cloth. She's made a T. And an H. And an E. Now uh, an R. T-H-E-R. She's spelling your name, Therese. Go on, madame. We're following you. Therese and... Therese and... L... A... U... R. Now she's spelling your name, Laurent. Therese and Laurent. Don't stop now, madame. Go on. Getting tired. H A V E. Therese and Laurent have. have what? Her finger stopped. Her hand has slipped off the table and back into her lap. Has either of you any idea what she might have been trying to tell us? No, not the slightest. Therese? Uh, I wouldn't know. What could she have meant? Therese and Laurent have what? I'm 
going up to sleep, Laura. It's late. How can you even think of sleep after what we saw her do tonight? We'll never be safe now. If she did it once, she could do it again. Sooner or later, Michelle will learn the truth. <laughs> She'll find a way to tell him. Just being here in the same room with her is enough to make me sick. With her and with you. You are sick, both of you. Poisoned with guilt and by each other. You know how I despise you, Laurent. <laughs> and myself. Good. Loathe each other. Torment each other from morning till night. Keep digging your own graves. Then bury yourself alive in them. While I watch you destroy yourselves and each other. And that's my dear children. That is your punishment. Camille will be avenged. Stiff and silent. Madame Racan sits in her wheelchair, the big red cat in her lap, feasting her eyes on Laurent and Therese, eyes that crushed them with brooding hate. Murder, though it have no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. You suppose Emile Zola, at age 26, as he wrote the final page of his story, remembered those lines of Shakespeare? I shall return shortly. Zola made this comment about Therese Racan, one of the first of his many great novels. I looked at myself as a scientist. I applied to two living bodies, Therese and Laurent, the same method that a surgeon would apply to corpses. This in order to discover how conscience can drive a criminal to despair and madness, to degradation and moral decay. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, William Redfield, Mary Jane Higby, Roger DeCoven, and Arnold Moss. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Beautiful music. This is KIXI Seattle. And the time at KIXI now, 11 o'clock. CBS News. Four bombs exploded late Monday night in Chicago's Loop and on Posh Michigan Boulevard. Five people were hurt, none seriously. I'm Mike Stanley reporting on the CBS Radio Network. With details of the Windy City explosions, here is CBS News reporter Jackie Castleberry. Four locations in Chicago were bombed tonight within 20 minutes of each other. The first explosion occurred on the ground floor of the 100-story John Hancock building. The second exploded at the First National Bank of Chicago. Four passers-by suffered minor injuries as they strolled by a city trash can where the bomb was hidden. The next target was an Israeli bank close to City Hall. The last bomb hit the city's central police headquarters. There was only minor damage, but officials have blocked off the area and restricted access to five other governmental buildings. Bomb and arson crews are now at the four locations hit, but there is no word on the type of explosives used or any clues as to who planted the bombs. Jackie Castleberry, CBS News, Chicago. More CBS News in a moment. 
Hi, I'm Flip Wilson, TV luminary, whatever that means. And I'm Johnny Bench, baseball superstar, according to the bubblegum cards. And I'm Geraldine Jones. You can call me anything you want, sugar. I love ball players. Did you ever go with one? My boyfriend Killer told me he was a catcher with the Dodger organization. Was he? Well, I went to Dodger Stadium and Killer was catching all right, selling beer and catching nickels and dimes. <laughs> what did you do? I threw him a high inside knuckleball across the <laughs> lips. I teach that taking a lie to Geraldine. <laughs> Geraldine, I heard you're a crusade chairperson for the American Cancer Society. Well, you heard right, honey. My fellow workers made me office chairperson because of my charm and powers of persuasion. Well, you don't have to persuade much to get help in the fight against cancer. No, mostly I make sure all those people who say they gave at the office actually give at the office. If you haven't already given at the office, send a check to your American Cancer Society. We want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. If you're feeling generous, folks, don't fight the feeling. And that goes for you too, John. <laughs> And now the waiting game begins for the presidential candidates. They've made their last pitches for votes prior to the Tuesday Big Three primaries in California, Ohio, and New Jersey. President Ford wound up his campaign with a motorcade tour of half a dozen Ohio towns, picturing challenger Ronald Reagan as a can't-win candidate. Reagan, having completed his stumping of Ohio Sunday, was back in California. The former governor's aides were trying to buy radio and TV time to counter the Ford commercial campaign, charging that as president, Reagan might start a war. Democratic frontrunner Jimmy Carter wrapped it all up in New Jersey, trying to convince voters not to cast ballots for uncommitted delegates backing California Governor Edmund Brown Jr. and Hubert Humphrey. Brown also was in New Jersey, trying to convince the uncommitted delegates to support only him. In Ohio, Frank Church conceded he does not expect to win there, but said he hopes to get a few delegates. Also in the Buckeye State, Morris Udall wrapped up four months of competing in primaries without winning one. He says he still hopes Ohio may give him his first victory, but at the end was talking of his quest for the presidency in the past tense. Many of the residents of southeastern Idaho, listed at first as missing in the flood spawned by the crumbling of the Teton Dam, have turned up alive. The latest casualty toll lists... Seven confirmed fatalities, 522 injured. Authorities say between 30 and 40 people still are listed as missing. John Mangan of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation says this week a top team will begin investigating the dam collapse. We will go into it very thoroughly. It's the first dam that we've lost in 72 years of uh, dam construction. Uh, there have been other dam failures uh, for various reasons. Uh, so we will examine this one very carefully, and to say what happened now would be pure speculation. No figures are available yet on estimates of total damage incurred in the flood. CBS News continues following this. I'm George Herman, CBS News. This Tuesday, the presidential primary race winds up with elections in California, Ohio, and New Jersey. My colleague, Neil Strausser, and I will anchor CBS News coverage on the CBS radio network with special broadcasts throughout the evening on hourly news broadcasts and with net alert bulletins when the developments warrant. Follow the trends and the results of the final presidential primaries with CBS News Tuesday night on the CBS radio network. I'm Charles Osgood, CBS News. Join me on Newsbreak, mornings on most of these CBS radio network stations, as we explore this curious world of ours. Some days, I'll pick a major news story to explore in further detail. Other days, it may be a person who did not exactly make the headlines, but whose story is noteworthy in the course of human events. Newsbreak, one of the many broadcasts of news and commentary, along with hourly CBS News, updates to the minute on most of these CBS radio network stations. It's up to President Ford now whether the United States will go to war against an aggressive strain of bees. The House Monday completed congressional action on a bill to ban the importation of honeybees except under specified conditions and authorized the Agriculture Secretary to cooperate with farm organizations and other governments to eradicate and control the so-called Africanized bees. The bees were created in Brazil by interbreeding with a strain of honeybees imported from Africa. A 1972 National Academy of Sciences report said because of its unprovoked mass stinging and frequent swarming, the Africanized bee is dangerous to people and animals. The Academy says the bees are moving north at the rate of 200 miles a year and unless checked, could reach the U.S. border in four to six years. Mike Stanley, CBS News. CBS for Seattle, this is KIXI.